So Presto is our proprietary animation system. This is a system that our second generation, <clears throat> we wrote this originally for Brave, and it was also used on Monsters University. It's being used on every movie since. Now this is an, the environment that Allison uses to animate these shots. And it's important to note that this isn't just playing back, that what we have here is live, a live interactive environment. We're trying to create an environment where you can move these characters around, you can move your characters around, everything is interactive so that Allison can be as unimpeded as she can in terms of animating the shot. So certainly the camera's live, um, but also every part of Sullivan is live as well. So if we want to go in here, we can say, take his hands and start moving his hands around, all at interactive frame rates. Um, we can take his other hand, that works too. If you want to change just the pose of that finger, it's actually too straight, I want to, I want to tighten it down. You can go in and start tightening it down. Every part of him is, a posable, is posable live in the system. And that's something that's very important to us. It's very important that we have very fast interaction for, the, for our animators. Um, and that's something, that we get with the, that's something that we get with Presto. And we rely on NVIDIA graphics to do that. If we didn't have fast graphics, we wouldn't be able to make this happen. And again, this is a fully posable system. So for instance, I can go start dropping new facial expressions on Sullivan. All these things are live. All these things are editable by the animator at interactive frame rates while they work. Um, we, can, we can move in on his face here. We can say, I want to be able to lower his jaw. You can open his jaw, you can close it, gets a little kind of chew action going on. All this is constructed by the character's department. To, these deformations are constructed to be able to give Allison these, the controls that she wants to be able to get the effects that she needs. Um, we can go in and make him smile, for instance. Happy, we can pull him down. Um, we can drop the corners of his mouth up or down. These, this is all happening inter interactively for our animators inside of Presto. Now we have that, we also have kind of these overall face, face overall mouth controls, overall twists, over in, ins, but then it gets amazing the small amounts of control that they require. So for instance, we've got these little center curls, curls and center pulls. We have an animation control to just control that part of the lower lip. His face is sprinkled with all of these animation controls. We have, Sullivan has 1,500 different animation controls, and all of those things need to be live, and all of those things need to be interactive for animators. And I wanted to bring you to one of the biggest things that we came to for Monsters University was, was Sullivan's fur. So this fur was always a problem for us on Monsters, Monsters Incorporated. We could never show animators what Sullivan's fur looked like, and if you don't show him his fur, he kind of looks different. Um, if you take off his fur, he looks skinny, like his, his body shape is different. What this fur is, his, uh, Sullivan has 900,000 hairs on him, and each hair has four CVs, four points. Each of those points is being warped only on the GPU. If we, had to, if we had to take all of those hairs and pose them on the CPU, we wouldn't be able to get the kind of frame rates we get, but this is the kind of frame rates we can get by posing three million vertices on the NVIDIA GPU. We take this hair, this is his actual groom that he was constructed with in the shot, we download that to the NVIDIA GPU, and then we do multi-pass OpenGL drawing to be able to warp those hairs into place. And it's a tremendous amount of detail, and it really doesn't slow the animators down. We don't, have to take, we don't have to start taking away from our expensive rigs that we need to get the posing we do because we can have the GPU drawing the hair. Um, so let me bring it to a shot, let me bring it to part of the shot here. Um, so as you look and see Sullivan here, one of the animation concepts that was very important for us to bring forward is that his head needed to be down and forward. If his head was back and up, he looked like a guy in a suit, and we didn't want to violate that. So here you can see, as you look at the overall silhouette of Sullivan here, you can see that it does. His head looks kind of like it's down over his, uh, over his back there. But if you didn't have the hair, he looks like his head is sticking up. So if Allison had to animate without that fur, she would have animated maybe this shot with his head too far up, and she would have said, oh, I need to move his head down because now he looks like a dude in a suit. And then she would have done a final render, and then she would have seen the hair come back. And then she would have realized she got it wrong, and she would have to reanimate the shot to lift his head back up. And that's the kind of expensive iteration for our animators that we're trying to avoid by giving them the fur all the time. And you can see it all over his body. You can see like the space in between his arms, um, the space all along his leg. Um, he's got this big kind of business in the front, party in the back um, mullet going on. And there's a lot of that volume on his back that's important to his silhouette. So fur, that was a breakthrough for us on Monsters University, using NVIDIA GPUs to pose that fur in real time. And this was used by every animator on every shot in the movie. 
and that was a, a very big success for us. That was when a lot of them learned what a GPU was. They're like, really, GPUs give us that? That was nice. Um, let me show you another shot here where we have Sullivan. This is a little bit of a different animation rig than we saw before, um, but it all moves around in real time. And again, we want to be able to see, he looks different without his hair. Like, that is not the same big, thousand-pound beast animal that that is. Like, it just conveys a different physicality to the scene, and it impacts the animator's experience while they work. Um, so what do you think, Sullivan? Let me zoom in on his head here. So what do you think? Do you like it, with, do you like, it like this? No. Sullivan doesn't like to be naked. He doesn't like to be a plucked chicken. He wants to look like this. Do you like that, Sullivan? There we go. Much better with his fabulous blue fursuit. How does that make you feel, Sullivan? Whoop. Yay! He's very excited to have his fabulous blur suit. He's very happy with us for that. And again, this was all running on the NVIDIA GPU. We're drawing that fur here. We have two characters, each with fur. We also have shadow passes, and the fur is being drawn in the shadow pass. So we're drawing those three, mil we're drawing those three million vertices four times here, and we're not having any kind of slowdown. It's really important to us to, to be able to create an environment that can be playful, where the animator can just reach in and grab that character and start moving him around in real time without having to worry about slow, bogging down speeds. And that's what we get with Presto, and that's enabled by the NVIDIA GPUs that we use. Let me show you uh, another example here. This is Hardscrabble. Hardscrabble is the dean of Monsters University. And we have a couple of things going on here. We have a lot of surface detail um, that's driven by P-Text textures that you can see on her surface. Another thing to remember here, uh, another thing to see here is that these, her arms are very smooth. They're round and smooth pieces. Um, that's something that, um, that's something I'm going to show you that the underlying geometry is actually not like that. So for instance, if we show, um, these are these lines. These are the actual lines that are on the CPU, um, and everything else. All of those smooth surfaces, all of that high-resolution detail is only on the GPU, and is being and is being done entirely um, by by the, the. This is running on a, a K6000 machine, um, and it's running entirely on the 2800 cores on that K6000. Let me show you a little bit about what's going on under the covers here, with the geometry. So. The geometry, what we're using here, let me switch back to uh, low complexity on her. This is, again, the geometry that's actually on the CPU. This is what the rigor articulated. Um, this is what lives on, on the Intel CPU. And as you can see, we can, we can get pretty low resolutions down here. You know, as you look at these legs, you know, we've got surprisingly few numbers of spans. You would think that, oh, no, that's not, a number, that's not enough spans. That's going to look faceted when I render it. But what we use is subdivision surfaces to take those and make them go add more complexity and more complexity, as much complexity as you want. Now, we have as now we're starting to hit as many, see, as many points drawn as we have pixels on the screen. And all of, that, all of that geometric amplification is only happening on the GPU due to open subdiv. Open Subdiv is open source software that we wrote. Um, some of the authors are here, Takahiro Tajima. We have Manuel Kramer and David Yu over here. If you haven't seen the Open Subdiv talks that Manuel and David gave this morning, I highly recommend you go to the streaming site and watch them afterwards, because this is open source software that we would love people to use. Um, and it's, it's free, and it's awesome. I may be biased. Now, one thing to notice here is that as you zoom in, you can see how we're creating geometry on the fly. That isn't a fixed mesh. You zoom in, and polygons start pop, 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 popping into place. What's happening here is that Open Subdiv knows that the surface is smooth and knows that it can take that smooth surface and dice it. We're using OpenGL tessellation shaders with OpenGL4. And they're great. They run super fast on these Kepler boxes. So here we have 3,000 Kepler cores, all making decisions about how to draw that surface, all happening on the fly as we're zooming in and out, and all at very fast frame rates. This is something that allows our, our, our animators to see much more high fidelity in the surfaces that they use um, without, having to, um, without having to slow things down. It used to slow you down to like 10, 5 frames a second to see that display, and now it's all happening at the speeds that you're seeing here. Um, and again, this is, not, this is not cache geometry. This isn't a GPU cache of any form. This is all live surfaces. Um, so I can go in and pose her eyebrows. I can lift her eyebrows a little bit back up. And here I can see, oh, as I lift up, I'm seeing some stretching on the underside of her eyelid, or I'm seeing some, some, um, some stretch kind of in here in the middle of her, of her eyebrow. If we didn't have that high-resolution surface detail, you might not be able to see it. You might not be able to see kind of the effect that the out kink 
um, control on her eyes. Let me turn off shadows here. The outkink control on her eyes has on those little spikes on the back of her head. But with open subdiv surface, techno so surface tessellation, we're able to show that complexity. There, you got my beautiful eyebrow animation. I should be an animator. No. Um, let me show you one more shot where we bring this all together. So this is a shot, again, from Monsters University, where we have six characters on screen, and we have shadows, and we have a lot of geometric detail. We talked before about how Sullivan has those three million vertices that are being warped in real time. Here, here that's happening in the first draw. It's also happening in the shadow pass, and it's happening for art in both the first draw, in the shadow pass, in both viewers full screen. So what we're doing is we're drawing, we're warping that hair eight times, and we're able to maintain the frame rates that we need to. We're able to maintain smooth 24 FPS frame rates that our animators need, while all of that is happening in both viewers simultaneously. That's something that we, we couldn't come close to just a few years ago. And this scene has a lot of complexity in it. You can see that there's pipes down here, there's a lot of ventilation shaft with a lot of geometric complexity, and you see all the different characters loaded here with those shadows. And it remains fully interactive so that our animators can reach into these scenes, grab Art's foot. I love this character. Move him around. Oh, that's not his foot. This is his foot. Move him around. You can see the shadows updating. You can see Sullivan here. You can see all of that fur. All of it is being posed in each one of these viewers. It's so much geometric complexity. You'd think we'd want to reduce it, but the NVIDIA GPU did it fast enough, so we never needed to. We could just use these highly complex grooms. And that all happens in real time. You can grab Mike's hand, move him around. The shadows are there. All of that's happening in real time. And again, all of that is happening with the NVIDIA GPUs we're running.